Hi guys, this is Alana. Thanks for joining us for the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm here with my co-host Jamie. Today we're talking about spiritual decluttering, which I think is going to be a really interesting topic to discuss, and I'm excited to dive in. But before we do that, let's open with a word of prayer. God, we just come before you just humble, knowing that that you are sovereign over every aspect of our lives, God. And we just thank you for that, that you would, that you would um, just be available to us to allow us to be aware of things that need to be decluttered in our lives. Um, as we talk today about spiritual decluttering, I just, I pray that you would help us to really examine ourselves and to really take an honest look at the things in our lives and in our hearts that need to be just, just cast out of us, Lord. And, 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 for us to move in the complete opposite direction. Um, we just pray that your presence would be here with us, that you would open our ears and our hearts to what you have to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Our verse of the day today is Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. This is one of my all-time favorite verses. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And I just chose this, as I mentioned in our prayer, our, our topic today is spiritual decluttering and I love the fact that this gives us a picture of throwing off everything that hinders and getting untangled by sin. I just I love that visual. And I think spiritual decluttering is another good visual of that kind of thing of whether it's sin, whether it's um, just other things that might not be labeled as sin that just hinder us from, from leading the kind of prayer lives and the kind of relationship with God and the close walk with God that he desires for us. And that I know that each one of us desires to have. So I love that. Love that verse. Yeah, that's a great one. So we have a, just for fun today, do you have anything in your house that is a regular source of frustration? I do. So I, hit my head on my, I have two things. I hit my okay. head on my kitchen cabinet all the time. Ooh. I mean, like I've had blood. It's Ooh. been awful. Oh my goodness. There's a kitchen cabinet and I don't know why, but it's just right where it is, where I yeah, do, yeah. I stand at the sink. And if I have it open and I bend down to get the dishes out of the dishwasher and put it back up, it hits me like right uh, on the head. Oh, it's ouch. been bad, but I've drawn blood before and it's happened more Yuck. than once. Oh and, no. And the other thing is just like the the dishwasher itself. Oh, okay. I'm I'm going to move on from that. Okay, this other so okay. but uh, this is a better one. So where I am right now. So you guys can see, you can kind of see my like close quarters. Oh, right. How you have to like squeeze yourself into it. <laughs> I have to literally like if you could see the opening like I mean the opening that I have to squeeze through the desk. So this closet, which, you know, the podcast studio as mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. I need to rearrange it a little bit because it is, it's a very big source of frustration when I'm like, especially trying to get in and out quickly. Yeah. Right. So yeah, let's just say there are several things that are a constant source of frustration in my home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think for me, this isn't a frustration. It almost, it may be like once a year I get frustrated, but our, our kitchen cupboard doors, like sometimes I'll walk in and like 90% of them are open. <laughs> right. I don't know if it's like the doors themselves or if it's just that people forget to close. It's not a big deal. But um, the one thing that does happen is people will like use a, a towel, like a hand towel once. And then like by the end of the day, I can have like 10 towels on the counter, <laughs> you know, and then there's no clean ones. Um, so or if you're like me, they end up like on the floor yeah. or like sometimes the way that my um, water sprays out. It like, oh, uh -huh. it'll like, or if it hits a dish wrong, and I'll get water right. on the floor. So I'll take a towel and I'll kind of put yeah, it. Yeah, but then it just stays there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, mean, I guess it doesn't stay there, but I don't move it. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> About once a week, I have to tell one of the kids to walk through every single room in the house and find all the socks because our dog treats the socks like a comfort object. Like she'll wake oh. up in the morning, she'll be waiting for me to come in our room, wagging her tail, and she'll just have a sock in her mouth. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so by the end of the week, you know, we can like once I think we counted over a dozen socks that she had just like carried somewhere and <laughs> put. I saw in I think it was Barnes and Noble or like one of those bookstores. There was a oops. Sorry, I was stepping on a cord and I heard this like crackling sound. I don't know if that came through on the recording. Oh, no. Sorry, guys. I didn't hear it. Um, so there was this little book and it was a little puppy that uh, it had captions of all these puppy pictures. And one of them was a puppy with a shoe in its mouth. And it was a little rhyme and it said something like, um, I am so sorry I chewed up your shoe. I only did it because it smelled like you. <laughs> but the socks make me think of that. Like the socks yeah. smell like the people smell she like loves. And so she's cute. like her little, her little blankie. <laughs> that actually is pretty cute. I like that. But no, the, I mean, they're very much her, like her comfort object. It's, it's kind of cute, but also, annoying. you know, the other thing I, I wear shoes in the house now so that it's not a peeve, mm -hmm. but in the winter when people track, you know, snow into the walkway then you know because of snow on their boots yes. if I step in something wet with a socked foot it's just like I can't stand that feeling so now I just wear uh, shoes oh, all the yes. time which is very un-Alaskan um not an Alaskan thing to do but I guess it's not I have yeah. these slippers now I'm actually wearing them right now and I wear the, I have mm -hmm. these slippers with um like rubber soles so it uh -huh. has eliminated that problem for that very reason because nice. I can't stand yeah. that either because even if it's there's a, a mudroom even if there's like you just you can't oh, help yeah. it if people track mm -hmm. stuff in or the dog you know the dog comes inside you know from being outside dogs don't know how to wipe their feet no. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so yeah now I just wear shoes in the house that would make a cool video if you trained kitty how how to to wipe like her paws. wipe her paws before she comes be in. <laughs> <laughs> so spiritual decluttering. What are we talking about here? I liked this. This one was your idea. And so I've actually read the, um, so, you know, the, the popular book, the, what's it called? The magical magic of tidying something. up. Marie Magical Kondo. Art. Magical yeah, art Magical of tidying up. Yeah. And so Marie Kondo is kind of the thing now, right? People have heard about her and she's pretty cool. Um, and she talks about regular decluttering. And, and mm -hmm. so this idea of spiritual decluttering has come to my mind before too. And I just think we can look at it as a parallel of, you know, mm -hmm. this idea of, of clearing out the things that don't spark joy, you know, or trademark. Is that, is spark joy trademark? Maybe <laughs> we can't it, say you know, that. Going back to Hebrews though, what's the language they use there? Throw off everything that hinders. Yeah. You know? So if it's not, if it's not helping your walk with God is another way of looking at it, you know? Right. And like Jesus, you know, Perfect saying, throw it off. yeah. Was it Jesus or Paul? I think it was Jesus that said all things are permissible, but not all are beneficial. That's which, Paul. Okay, that is Paul. Sorry, Paul. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm Well, so the, the idea of spiritual decluttering, um, I think, so what are some specific things that would stand in the way? I mean, I guess there are two categories. One would be sin. Right. You definitely have to declutter easy. that. Yeah. And then I think of, so, you know, maybe let's spend more time talking about the things that are less obvious, you know, yeah. like if it's in, then it's getting in the way and you need to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think there are other things that, you know, aren't necessarily a sin, but that still we can declutter. So I think of things that are just kind of draining your time, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, I've gotten pretty good about like unfollowing different things on Facebook because I was just spending too much time there or I've got this Chrome extension now it's called Newsfeed Eradicator and it makes it so I can't scroll on Facebook on my browser anymore um, so things like that I think can be useful decluttering the things that take your attention away from real life which you know a lot of social media does or just mindless web surfing. I've gotten into these, you know, like you can read one article that looks interesting and then you, that is an interesting article, but then below that is a link to an article that's kind of dumb, but still a little interesting. And then before you know it, like 30 minutes have passed and you're reading about, you know, like 
green peppers with warts on them from Guatemala. You know, I'm like, who cares? You read <laughs> that too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and now what I'm not saying, I'm not saying that there's not a place for some of these. Like sometimes it's relaxing. Sometimes it's interesting to keep up with what's going on. But sometimes I think we can deliberately get rid of those types of things in order to just make more, um, more time, more energy, get our brains less distracted so that like when you do go to pray, your brain's not constantly seeking new um, levels of, you know, uh, I can't think of the word like input. Do you know what I mean? I mean, that's the word. Like if I'm praying with my journal, but my phone's right there, I'll go like five minutes praying and then I'll pray for Jamie. And then I'll remember that Jamie wrote me an email last night that I never responded to. True story, guys. And so I'll go to my, you know, I'll grab my phone, I'll grab my email, and it starts with really good intentions. If I want to respond to this email and send Jamie some encouragement, and then 10 minutes later, I'm back to that green pepper in Guatemala with a wart on it. Right. <laughs> so, well, and so spiritual decluttering, I think we could define it as clearing space for your spiritual priorities, which could involve practical decluttering of other non-spiritual, oh, you know sure. what I mean? So mm -hmm. like the, the inbox, you know, you're, you're unsubscribing from certain things because yeah. that's my big problem lately is I've mm -hmm. subscribed to several things lately that must have triggered other people because I have yeah, gotten so fun. many. Yeah. yeah. So just even, then, yeah, it's time and energy. And, you know, I think it's, Anything that's just training our brain to be jumping from one thing to the next thing to the next thing, it makes it harder for us when it comes time to pray. It makes it harder for us to focus because we are, you know, we have become used to that stimulus, you know, like I'm making up statistics, but how people say, you know, the attention span for an adult has gone from five minutes to two seconds because of smartphones, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. Well, um, so I think part and, of that, oh, go ahead. No, I, I was... I was just going to pitch up. You go. No, well, you really. No, 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 sister. No, you. <laughs> I have a joke about that, but I don't think it would be appropriate. It's like too off the wall. Uh -oh. We're going to, we're, no, no, no. Okay. It's not a bad okay. joke. No, it's, it's funny, but it's definitely, we're talking about <laughs> simplifying, decluttering, no rabbit trails. Exactly. But, <laughs> and no Guatemalan uh, green peppers with forts. <laughs> yes. This would be the joke equivalent of that. So I think uh -huh, just uh -huh. creating white space, like, I think you can combat oh, clutter sure. with mm -hmm. rather than taking the passive route of, well, I've got to get this stuff out of my life. You can also combat clutter with just creating that white space that you're talking about. Yeah. I think, and I think of that the other stuff out. Yeah. I think of that by like not having every single minute completely scheduled. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Cause oh, yeah. I feel drained two hours into a day like that. You know, it's very rare, but when I do have a day where it's just like back to back errands or, you know, here to here to here to here to here, um, with no real pause in between, I know it leaves me feeling so physically and psychologically tired that that does impact your prayer life. Now, sometimes we can't get around it. You know, sometimes you just have days that are that busy. But I think if there's a way to, I love that idea of the white space because going back to like physically decluttering how many people like look at a cluttered house oh and and let's go on record like i'm i'm not a neat freak are you a neat freak i am not by any <laughs> sense of the word so, like you know we haven't marie condoed our life i have no. no desire to marie condo my entire life you know like this but how many times do you look like let's say you've got just such a cluttered kitchen and you say if i just had a kitchen that was twice as big I would have so much room to work. And then you move and your kitchen's twice as big and it ends up just as cluttered. Do you know, like, right. I love, I don't love moving, but I like the first week or two, like after everything's unpacked yes. and everything's in its place. Uh huh. But then it's like, okay, well now look, I have an empty cupboard. And how long is it going to last before that cupboard's full of junk? <laughs> you <Yeah>, know? <laughs> totally. So when I think of white space, I think of not only... Like, cause it's one thing to just clean out your closet, but then just fill it back up with a whole bunch of junk. Mm -hmm. But it's another thing to like deliberately clean out. Now we're metaphorical, clean out, um, clean out your schedule and make it a point to not let that time get full of junk. So maybe you're done with a volunteer commitment at your school, at your kid's school. 
maybe your initial go-to is like, oh, great, now I have an extra four hours a week. What should I do? And maybe instead you just decide, you know what, I'm not going to fill up this time. This is time where I can be free to serve God or encourage a friend or just spend time in the word. Um, sometimes I think it's important for us as Christians, and I think especially as parents, like we're so um, wrapped up in like programming our kids' lives or some people oh, can, yeah. that we don't leave time. There's no room for like, Every so often it happens. Actually, it's not even every so often, like maybe once or twice a week, my husband comes home from work, the kids all come downstairs and we just sit on the couch and chat for 10 minutes. You know, like mm -hmm. it's not that we've scheduled this family time and had to call a family meeting, you know, but it just kind of happens. Yeah. And when you're always going from here to here to here to here, then you don't have the opportunity for those things to just kind of naturally happen. So I think of that in terms of time with God, you know? Yeah, it's nice to have scheduled time where you know that this is your time with the Lord. And sometimes it's nice for just there to be room in your um, schedule for those times to just kind of happen organically and, and not not have to be scheduled in. Because some people, like, the minute there's a hole in the schedule, it's like a vacuum, you know? It just gets sucked up with something else right away. I think we need to be more careful with being being comfortable with a slower pace so that we're open for those kinds of encounters with the Lord. Yeah. And, you know, I think one thing that could be really helpful for someone, because I tend to be in the, like, I, I freely admit our family is way overscheduled. And mm -hmm. my husband and I have gone back and forth on it. And we've kind of tried to figure out different systems. And at this point, I think we've struck a balance, but I still think we're overscheduled. Mm -hmm. For someone mm -hmm. like me, I, and I, I've always kind of been that way. So, you know, now I have three kids in school and it's that exact thing. There was this vacuum of time and I thought, how on earth am I going to fill up, you know, from 9am when I drop my first kids off, my, my second kids off to 2.30 when I leave to get my other son, like, what am I going to do in that time? I'm going to have all this free time. Well, I've scheduled it. I mean, I've got know, um, two yeah. days a week at one school, one, two days a week at another school. I've got just all kinds of stuff. and. For somebody that is, and I'm working on, you know, the removal of some of that stuff, but for somebody like that, mm -hmm. it might be a benefit. It's kind of like when you have a shopping list and you go to Costco and you say, okay, I'm only going to do the things on my shopping list right. and nothing else. Mm -hmm. If you do have a schedule that's, that's over scheduled or that you feel is, is full, I feel like you can maybe just say, okay, look, I do have a full schedule, but there are these gaps. So write those things down and say, mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to do anything other than what's yeah. on this schedule so that yeah. those other times can be free. And mm -hmm. I think maybe even, and this sounds, I don't know, I don't know what it sounds like, but for me, this would be helpful, spiritually speaking, to have options so that when I have that white space, I'm not just like, whoa, what do I do with this? Because I've what do I do? <laughs> so to have spiritual yeah, options, absolutely. like, okay, mm -hmm. either spend time, you know, read, even what book of the Bible to read if I'm not in a Bible study at mm -hmm. the time mm -hmm. can be hard for me. So just knowing what those are going to be so that you can yeah. jump to those, I think could be a helpful mm -hmm. thing. So this will be interesting. This is something, it's not quite new that I'm trying, but just this is kind of what my prayer life is looking like. So I kind of divide my um, my goals and stuff into quarters and I, I just go by the calendar, calendar year. So we just wrapped up um, quarter three and we're in quarter four. And what I usually do is I have a specific quarterly journal that I use for that quarter, you know, starting day one is on day one. So it was funny because I reordered my journal, but it hadn't come by the start of the quarter. And so in a way, and it was just funky the way it worked because it's 90 days. These are 90 day journals, but you know, it's 365 days in a year. So I kind of had like a week that didn't exist. Like I was living in a week where like I was kind of not in quarter three, but quarter four hadn't started yet. Yeah. And I actually really liked it. And then, um, the journal I got was actually the wrong one. <laughs> and so I had started just going back to a blank journal 
um, while I was waiting for this other one to come. So what I'm doing, this is a long way of saying what I'm doing now, because you know me, like my, my prayer journal system can be pretty regimented, which has its pros and its cons. Um, and what I kind of like about it is I've decided to stick with just my blank journal for this quarter so that there is a little bit more flexibility, like what you were just talking about with choice. And so, you know me, I'm such a lister. So like, I'll start my quiet time with my list of what the quiet time's gonna look like that day, as opposed to usually like it's, I, I go from here to here to here, like I already kind of know my system. And it's been really, really neat. Um, so like it involves just a little bit more checking in with your intuition and things like that. But it's also not, the way I want to do it forever because I kind of like having the structure and predictability. But for me, you know, we've always talked about this, this problem I wrestle with, with is if you do have a disciplined system, it can turn into just going through the motions. So I almost feel like maybe this will just be kind of my fourth quarter thing, you know, and then I'll, I'll have three quarters of the year where, you know, it is just kind of regimented and structured and predictable and I know what I'm doing. But then one quarter where I'm kind of going back to just, um, yeah, just having to use more discernment, like, all right, God, how, do, how are we going to spend time together today? It's been really interesting. That is really neat. And I think that's a good, that's a good um, suggestion for anybody, really, that finds themselves mm -hmm. in a place of just feeling like things aren't working. Well, then. Like you're in a rut. Shake mm -hmm. it up, you know, do something different. Up. Yeah. And, and sometimes Even if it's just like for a day or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your routine or, you know, for a certain personality type, maybe the structure could be part of the clutter if, yeah, but other, that's a good point. but for other people like me, I feel like structure could remove some of my clutter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or at, for different people at different times of life, you know, yeah. or different times of the year, one or the other might be better. So don't be afraid mm -hmm to shake it up. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting. So going back to just kind of the core concept of decluttering, like we've talked some about decluttering your schedule, but I think there are other areas you can declutter too. Like one of the things I was thinking of is, um, I was thinking of fasting, like fasting from food. Mm -hmm. And I actually heard a scientific benefit of fasting is that, um, you know, it, it gave a statistic of basically how much of your body's energy goes into digestion, which is a mm. lot more than I would have thought. And so when there's nothing to digest, it actually like you can, some people say that after fasting, they get mentally more focused or mm -hmm. things like that. Um, so I could even think of, of, of like a physical fast as a, um, as a way to declutter, you know, or if there's a certain food that you know makes you mentally foggy, maybe you cut back on that food as a way of just kind of decluttering your body, you know, which can have some, some neat spiritual benefits. I feel like I didn't say that right, but maybe you could say it in the way, tell, tell me what, tell the listeners what I mean, because I didn't say it right. <laughs> What Alana is trying to say is, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> no, I thought you said that in a pretty good way. Just that uh, physical, okay, okay, yeah, a physical cleanse can also cleanse you spiritually. A cleanse, that's almost like a detox, right? Like yeah. I'm, I don't get into like nutritional detoxes and I'm not even, I know some people don't even think it's like medically sound stuff, but right. I think that the idea is for sure solid. Like, um, you know, I don't know. I, I guess I feel weird about this because I don't like giving nutritional advice because I think each person is a little bit different. But yeah, thinking about things that will, um, that can cleanse your body because <laughs> it can make you mentally more sharp. And any, like we said, if it's good for your brain, it's good for your prayer life because you need mm -hmm. that focus and energy. Well, and along the same lines, exercise, even if it's just walking instead mm -hmm. of driving somewhere, you know, I think yeah. that can be a form of, you know, and incorporating that with a spiritual practice can help yeah. create that white space. One other thing I thought of that happened to me yesterday was I, and it has to do with social media. I, I'm a member of several prayer groups and for whatever reason, my news feed had like six different of these prayer groups that have, you know, some of them have thousands of members of basically sharing prayer requests. and while prayer and sharing prayer requests is great, 
I felt like I, my, my spirit couldn't handle it. I was, yeah, sometimes it's too much. It was too much. And I just felt, oh, I can't even explain the feeling that I had. It was like an oppression, like, no, I, I totally can't understand. help these people. And I, even if I prayed through each thing, as I saw it really quickly, I'm like, yeah, I know God, you hear my prayer, but there was a burden. And yeah. so I feel like if you're prayer list or if whatever it is that you're engaging in, even if it's a good spiritual practice, mm -hmm. if it's causing you to feel a burden and, and not causing you to feel positive and empowered, like, and, and hopeful, then something might need to give. And so I think I need to, like, I know within our own praying Christian women community, there are lots of needs there. And I love mm -hmm. praying for the women in that community. And I wonder if maybe at this point, you know, that's where God wants me is to focus well, on those. Well, yeah. Decluttering your prayer list. Strangers. I know can be really important. Like, I, I think I've told you the story and I don't remember if I've shared it on the show, but we asked some friends of ours to join our prayer team when, when we were raising support. Uh, back when we were planning on being missionaries, did I tell you about this couple? Yes. So, um, we're, you know, first, you know, we're like, can you support us financially? And they weren't able to. It's like, oh, okay, well, we would love to have you join our prayer team. And these were like prayer warriors. And they said, sorry, we can't do that. Right? And it just blew me away. I'm like, right? what do you mean? Because prayer is so easy, right? And and that's uh -huh. exactly what they, they had already made their their prayer energy, their prayer burden for other missionaries was taxed. And they said, but you know what? We've got friends who are close to retiring. Once they retire, we will get in touch with you. And at that point, we would love to join your prayer team. So I think, yeah, like, and you and I have talked about during the segment of the show when we do the prayers for the unsaved, like your list for unsaved can get so unruly that you just don't, don't focus on it. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you, if you could pray for one person for 10 minutes a day or a hundred people for two seconds each, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I, I don't think it can be quantified, but at least I think people can understand what I'm trying to say is sometimes oh, it's yeah. better to pare it down so that you can pray more thoroughly for one or two things as opposed to trying to pray for like everything. Yeah. And I just think of it as, you know, you could just say, okay, God, we just pray for all the unsaved people in the world. You can do that. I mean, I'm sure that there's sure. validity to mm -hmm. that, but there's mm -hmm. something, I just feel like prayer is so, so much of prayer is receiving and being mm -hmm. led by the spirit to a commission, like a, a prayer burden. Mm -hmm. Not always. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there is the place and the time for God, just we pray for this group of people or whatever. But, right, right. but I think there's, there is just something really special about not that you have to get rid of all the others, but just the ones that you're going to pray thoroughly for and, and mm -hmm. ask God, like, how do you want me to be specifically praying for this person? Or of my list of 20 people, who are the three I'm going to pray for today that you really That's a just, good way to look at it. Yeah. I don't know. I forget which book it's in. But you know, Sandy from my novels, mm -hmm. have you read the book that explains her whole prayer card system? The Rolodex thing? Yes. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, like she's Was got Was that her based list. on a real person? Um, you know what? Okay. So let me explain it and then I'll tell, then remind me to tell you what it's based off of. Okay. So basically this fictional character in my novels, she has, um, a series of index cards that are organized by people she prays for every day, every week, or every month. And so, you know, the everyday card, it's just right there. The every week card, you know, she'll pray for one person on that and then move them, you know, so let's say there's seven cards, you pray for one of them and then just move it to the back. And then she's got 30 cards, which are her pray for once a month. So she'll pray for one and then move it to the back of the list. Um, the, the way I, I learned that it was actually for Bible memory. And so, you know, like when you're first memorizing something, you need to review it every day. And then this is, this has always been my struggle with Bible memory is like, how do you get to where you memorize it and you know it, but you're still going to remember it two years from now. Mm -hmm. And the system, I, I never like got to where I was disciplined in doing the system, but the system um, was similar. So the verses that you're learning right now are the ones you go over every day. And then the verses that you've just recently learned are the oh, ones yeah. you review every week. 
to just kind of keep them in there so you don't lose it. Right. And then eventually, like, so let's say you reviewed something every week for three months. Well, then you could move that verse to your just review it once a month. And then by that point, you're probably going to just remember it. So it was, that's, that was what her thing was based off of. But yeah, having people that, you know, you're going to be praying for thoroughly daily. um, Like, I don't feel guilty, Jamie, that I pray for my kids more than I pray for your kids. Like, I don't right? think anybody would look at me and be like, wow, she's a terrible friend. Yeah. How dare <laughs> yet, you? I mean, yet I do pray for your kids, you know? So I think sometimes we need to be okay with realizing, you know, nobody can pray thoroughly for everything. And so that's where you, you check into what is your own prayer burden? You know, that, that silly cliche about the guy on the beach throwing sand dollars into the ocean, you know, that story? No, I haven't heard that. You don't one. know that story? Oh, I it's it's so. so cliche. Okay. So, you know, sand dollars get washed on the beach and if they don't get back into the water, they die. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this guy's walking along a beach and there's like hundreds of thousands of sand dollars and he'll take a few steps and then lean over and pick one up and throw it into the ocean and then take a few steps and pick one up and throw it into the ocean. And this other guy comes up to him and he's like, what are you doing? And he says, well, I'm saving these sand dollars. And the guy says, you know, look around you. There are a hundred thousand sand dollars on this beach. There's no way you're going to make a difference. And so the guy just leans over, picks up another one, throws it back into the water. He says, well, I just made a difference for that one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like yes. it's, it's so cliche, but it, it really does serve a point. No, we're, we're never going to be able to thoroughly pray for every single person in the world, but that's why we can just trust the person that you're praying thoroughly for right now is reaping the benefits of your prayers. Right. And that God, I think when we look at it as like, God has appointed you to, to be a prayer warrior. And so Mm -hmm. he will bring those people to mind when they need it. And it, it, and I don't think we can rely on a newsfeed necessarily. I mean, unless that's your calling to that particular sure. newsfeed, but mm-hmm. we can't rely on that newsfeed to just be like, okay, pray for this person's mom, pray for this person's yeah. mom, pray for this person's whatever. And I, I think we, it needs to, it would just overwhelm. But like you said, I, when we look mm-hmm. at it as one divine appointment at a time mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we think of the amazing benefit that, yeah. that, 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 that results in, you know, that, yeah. You know, that sand dollar is, is alive. Right. <laughs> that one Isn't sand that, dollar. Doesn't that just bring tears to your eyes? It does. It's so inspiring. Actually, well, I feel a little guilty now because I've got one in my like curio cabinet that's dead and really cool looking. <laughs> that's really <Sorry>. funny. <laughs> you yeah. didn't make a difference in that one, Jamie. It didn't. No. <laughs> um, you know, I think though, going back to like decluttering, even your prayer time and your prayer list, Mm -hmm. I I think we can go back to that idea of white space. So that's kind of what I'm doing in my journaling method. Because my risk is that my prayer journal method could be so structured that I'm not open to remembering to pray for, you know, like I don't have a spot in my journal to pray for your kids. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Or something like that. And so this is allowing me to have that space. But again, if I, if I gave myself too much freedom and said, Oh, this is so cool. I'm just going to throw out my, my regular prayer journal. I think it's going to be too loosey goosey for me. And eventually I'm just, my brain's going to get so scattered that, you know, I don't know what I'm praying for. So I think, Mm -hmm. you know, the structure is nice, but having the, the white space so that you, um, I totally lost my train of thought, but just, you know, so that you've got some structure, but you also have some, okay, so let me give you a time management analogy for my writing. I will set aside time that I know I'm going to be writing, but I also have set aside time for projects. Like I'll plan ahead for a project that I don't know what it's going to be yet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I might be like this quarter, I want to write this book and this novella, and I'm going to spend this week working on some project, but I don't know what it's going to be yet. So just Mm -hmm. having time for things when they come up is I think important. So like having time to pray for the, um, you know, like who do you want me to pray for right now? God, like that can be Mm -hmm. a really powerful question and it takes energy because it's not like looking at your list and you're like, okay, now I get to pray for Jamie's kids, (laughs) you know, but it can be a really neat way to be, um, maybe more intuitive in trying to discern like who specifically God wants you to pray for right now. Yeah. Well, one really 
just, I can't tell you how cool it's been is just the creating time. It's just 10 minutes a week for our take 10 Tuesdays that we do in our praying mm-hmm. Christian women community. Yeah. I don't think we've mentioned that on the show oh. yet. So maybe we need to let people sure. know what's going on. Yeah. So every, um, every Tuesday lately, it's been at three o'clock Pacific time. So two o'clock Alaska time. Um, we just take, 10 minutes and I go live on Facebook on the Praying Christian Women Community, which is our closed Facebook group. Um, And anyone is welcome to request membership and we'll get you in if you request membership there. But I go on there and the first Tuesday of the month is we go through the ACTS method, A-C-T-S of prayer. So the first Tuesday of the month, we do adoration or praise. And the second Tuesday of the month is confession. The third Tuesday of the month is Thanksgiving. And the fourth is supplication, which was this past Tuesday. And then if there are five, we do kind of a wild card. We never know what's going to happen next. Because we have the white space. We have the white space, right? (laughs) But this last Tuesday, so that's built in white space. I mean, there's something planned for it, but it's built Mm -hmm. in Mm -hmm. like prayer time Mm -hmm. where I'm just basically sitting there and for a little bit of time, I've got a plan for it. So that time is my Mm -hmm. white space where I plan, God, what do you want this to look like? And this last one where we did supplication, as I was praying, praying about it, this one person came to my mind. It was just, I had this time, Hey God, what do you want this time to look like? And there's one particular person that I didn't pray for by name because I didn't have permission to share her name, but Um, she was one of the people that we prayed for. And that was just powerful. Like that was, that was huge. And I just realized, it made me realize how little time I spend listening to God and just asking Mm -hmm. him and how much time I spend bringing my own list and my own agenda to him. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that having a mix of both is fine. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I I know that this season of how I'm doing my prayer journal right now, like it is harder. And so I think if I had just told myself, okay, this is how you're going to do it from now on, I think I would get overwhelmed too quickly. Um, But it it is sometimes nice. So I'm trying to think of kind of an everyday life analogy. Like my husband and I, like we can get, so Friday, Friday is our our movie slash TV night together. Um, Just the two of us. And we always have a TV show as a default because it can be really annoying to be like, well, what do you want to watch? I don't know. What do you want to watch? Well, this oh, looks you good. Could no, spend that, like a half hour, half just an hour and finding something. I know. And what I realized, like, I, I just don't like choosing things like either I don't care enough for it to be a big deal or like, I don't know. It's just, it's not my favorite part of the week trying to figure out. So basically we've got, Here's five minutes browsing through movies. If nothing catches our eye, we know that here's the TV show that we're going to fall back on. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So sometimes I almost picture in prayer, you know, like your, your, your list, your organized thing that you just, here's what I want to pray through. That's kind of what you go through, but still allowing for, for that to change. Um, Again, (laughs) I just feel so rambly today, but I hope you get what I'm saying. I think you've been fine. I don't think. Okay. All right. Let us know if Alana has, Alana has been rambly rambled. today. No, you have not rambled. You've been just fine. Everything has made perfect sense. Okay. I am I am so glad. Do you have any other um, topics on decluttering that we haven't covered yet? I have. I just have two things that I was thinking of. So the first thing is just like kind of to go back to that idea of white space and creating it. Mm-hmm. Don't be discouraged if it's hard because, um, it's true. you mm-hmm. know, you could even start with just taking a one minute timer and yeah. just setting it for one minute during your busy mm-hmm. day and just creating one minute of white space or three minutes or, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, but yeah. don't be afraid if it's, it don't be, we've said this many times on the podcast, but don't be discouraged if it's hard because it's hard for all of us. We have trained our brains to receive and it's so hard when it comes to, you know, just be still before God mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because he's not going to come at us like, you know, like, like social media, he's much more right. quiet. And so I, I just think that don't be discouraged and, and persevere at little by little increasing mm-hmm. your white space until you get to a place yeah. where you're trained a little bit more. Cause we all struggle with that, I think. Well, and I think even allowing white space in your prayers. So like, let's mm-hmm. say you're praying for three minutes, don't feel like 
you, you can't go five seconds without having a verbal prayer in your mind. You know, like sometimes just that sense of being quiet and still, like one of the best tips I heard for, um, you know me, like I like to read up on things that like help you increase your focus mm -hmm. and your memory and that kind of thing. One of the best tips is like, be okay with being bored. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Oh, so like, gosh, yes. I sometimes deliberately will be okay with being bored. So maybe that means that my husband's pumping gas in the car and my go-to would just be pull up my phone, check my email. But instead I just kind of sit there, you know, I'm like, okay, it's okay to slow down. It's okay to be quiet. And same thing with our prayers. Like it doesn't have to be constant chatter. Mm -hmm. I think some people have it in their head that the way to successfully pray, like, to have a, a 20 minute quiet time is to be praying nonstop for 20 minutes right. and prayer always involving like mentally thinking through the words or writing out the words and having that white space even in our prayer time, I think is super important. If you think about like one of your best dates with your husband, my guess is let's say it was an hour long date. You probably weren't nonstop talking the whole time. Like some of it is just being together and enjoying each other's company and mm -hmm. letting the conversation progress naturally and things like that. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, the last thing that I, that I was thinking was, you know, we, we touched on how sin can be kind of can clutter our spiritual lives. So I just wanted to kind of read through my own list of kind of what I struggle with that needs to be decluttered. A couple mm -hmm. of these things mm -hmm. I actually had to declutter today before we recorded. I confessed yeah. some things to Alana and was like, this is what I'm struggling with. And it's just, it gets in the way of what mm -hmm. God, what God's best for us. So I just wanted to like hit some topics without going into detail, but you know, some things could be um, bitterness judgmental attitude, critical nature, gossip, negativity, victim mentality, pride, things like that. Like all of those things, mm -hmm. if any of those rang a bell, those could be things that you need to look and be like, mm, okay, I need to get, get real with God and, and purge that through confession and, you know, mm -hmm. acknowledging its role. And, and it just will be so freeing. I mean, Jesus says, come to me, all of you that are weary, that are heavy laden. Yeah. I'll give you rest for your souls. My yoke mm -hmm. is easy. My burden mm -hmm. is light. Love that you verse. know, so mm -hmm. that's yeah. what he wants. I know a big one for me that I've been very deliberately trying to declutter from is just, you know, this sense of always being busy. I think you were the one who just totally blew my mind when you quoted somebody who said, you know, busyness is nothing but a state of mind. Like, I thought you told me that. I thought maybe, you told me that. <laughs> maybe I did. Who knows? I bet. I bet there's a listener who remembers who said it first. That's right. But but no, that blew my mind too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and just realizing, hey, I I can let go of this sense of constantly needing to feel hectic and rushed, and that's such a nice way to enter into a prayer time. You know, mm. it's just. And it doesn't even have to be every day, but every once in a while, just having the sense of, hey, God, it's you and me. We've got all the time in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, that's pretty amazing. Well, after, so this is what I perceived. I perceived that you told me this, or maybe we were talking about it, but you okay. told me this. And, and I realized that, yeah, I have a perceived sense of busyness. And mm -hmm. so what I did, I, I remember being in the grocery store and I even had kids with me and it mm -hmm. felt for a moment hectic. And I was like, wait, I'm not doing heavy labor. Like I'm walking through the store. And so I just, I took a breath and I just practiced. I said, God, thank you for this rest of walking mm -hmm. through the grocery mm -hmm. store. That's and neat. in my mind, I just was talking to God and I yeah. felt rested. And so mm -hmm. you can have a busy life, not to say that you should glorify yeah. it, but you can be at rest even while you're doing errands or chores or whatever. Yeah. I've never read it, but isn't that, that's what I understand the premise to be of practicing the presence of God by Brother Lawrence. Are you familiar I, with that book? Yeah. Oh, I love that book. Yeah. Where he would just be doing dishes at the monastery. Mm -hmm. Was it a monastery that he worked I believe at? So, I think yeah. he was a monk. And he would be doing dishes and just carrying on this conversation mm -hmm. with God and, and practicing his presence. Like he's with yeah. me no matter what I'm doing. I can mm -hmm. always pray. I don't have to sit in yeah. silence to talk to him. Right. 
Right. Well, regardless of who coined it first, and I'm sure somebody else, I'm sure that whether it was you or me who said it to the other first, I'm sure we were quoting somebody else. Yes. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, you know, just realizing, hey, busyness doesn't exist. You know, like I was talking to someone today about productivity. I'm putting together a course on productivity for authors. And I realized like here, it was just another one of those kind of mind blowing things like 10 minutes is 10 minutes, whether you're frantically working or asleep doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Like it's still the, it's still the same 10 minutes. And, you know, I, I have a hard time going beyond that. Like I'm sure that somebody who's more articulate could kind of take that to the and therefore, and I can't, but something about that concept just really stood out to me is, um, I don't know. I don't, again, don't know what I'm trying to say, but God does. I'm guessing Jamie does because we're so close and hopefully we share parts of our brains. Do we? That's weird. That sounded, <laughs> it's yeah. going from my headset through the wire into your headset. So yes, we do you know what I used to think? I used to think so back when there were like corded landlines. Yeah. I used to think that if somebody shot a gun like in the receiver of a phone while I was on the phone that the bullet would like travel and, and like I I don't think it was quite a fear but it was almost to the point where I was afraid that that might happen you know where I think that came from like huh. it was one of those cartoons that we grew oh, up with really? there was a, where I just remember this like the power line and like there was something going through the phone and like there was this really big like lump yeah going the no line. that sounds familiar I bet that was where you got it okay and is it Looney true Tunes that you can, or something yeah is it true <laughs> that a landline could electrocute you electrocute you in a lightning storm I don't know the answer to that okay but I that also was another bought fear, into that but... <laughs> urban legend or truth one or the other I bought into that as well okay. oh and the story now what I know is true is a guy there were stories of people with those electronic keys that you put into the thing. There was a story okay. of a man in a, I think in a, a lightning storm that uh -huh. was trying to get into his, his hotel room on an oh. outdoor like Ooh. balcony. Oh, now no. maybe I'm making this up. Maybe this was an urban okay. legend too, but I think that he used his key and was electrocuted by some oh. kind of thing, but it's a plastic key. Plastic doesn't okay. conduct electricity. So I don't know if that's mm. real yeah. or not. Anyway, we digress. We, we really did. We need to declutter our, our chatter. Yes. Declutter <laughs> no, but you this know what? episode. Actually, this is actually a great point to end on that I think is important too, because I think people can carry the sense of decluttering too far, whether yeah. you're talking about like, you know, Marie Kondo in your house. <laughs> and or, then regretting everything you got rid of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So another slight tangent. There are some things about the minimalist movement that I do appreciate. But I also kind of recognize that you need to, the people who are okay with just getting rid of anything that doesn't spark joy, honestly, like, okay, so this is me getting a little bit political. Like, those are the people who can afford to replace it if they need it again. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, picture, like, when you and I were growing up, and there was this stereotype of the, the grandma who had lived through the the depression and was terrified of getting rid of anything. Yes. You know, right? so I almost feel like the minimalist movement, like there are some things about it I really, really, really appreciate and like, but there's also this part of me that's like, well, you know, some people need to hold on to something because you never know. I don't know. That's again, a, a, we're, we're on the bunny trail episode of the year, I think. But I remember what I was going to say. I think that some people can take the idea of decluttering and go too far. Mm -hmm. And whether we're talking about like getting rid of clutter in your home or like some, I, I think that there was a point in my life where I would have looked at the conversation you and I are having right now and said, well, yeah, all the parts where they talked about prayer are really good, but the parts where they just went off about Looney Tunes, like what a waste of time. Right. You know, and, and I feel like, you know what, like sometimes just laughter and conversation are acts of worship in and of themselves. Like the other night, my husband and I were getting ready for bed and one of our favorite YouTube comedians had dropped a new video. So, you know, we just stopped everything and spent 10 minutes watching this YouTube comedian who's clean, but funny. And no, there was no, the, the argument can be made that it did nothing to improve our prayer lives or advance the kingdom of God. 
But you know what? We laughed. It drew us together. It was a moment of joy and fun. And I think that those are important too. So, so I guess don't, uh, in your quest to declutter, don't, don't get rid of everything, you know, like, um, don't get rid of Friday night movie night if that's your thing or do you, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a great point to end on a good balance yeah. to the, awesome. to the equation. All right. So we have a free new video series. This is pretty exciting. Do you want to, you're a little bit more familiar with it, Jamie. Do you want to tell us about it? Yeah. And I'm going to be really super honest with you all. I haven't recorded all of it yet. So this is my uh -huh. way of making myself do it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. As of the airing of this, it has been recorded and you will have access to it. So, Yay. but it is, um, yeah, I'm very excited about this. This started from just a blog post, um, gratitude from A to Z. And it's just 26 things that God didn't have to give us, but did anyway. And it started just from a conversation I was having with God along the way. And it was just something that um, I just started thinking about, like, you know, God didn't have to make the flowers beautiful. Yeah. Or he, he didn't, didn't have to make a platypus. Yeah. <laughs> what is the purpose of a platypus? <laughs> well, P was already taken because it's prayer oh, because oh, we're the praying person. But I, maybe I'll switch <laughs> that up before I record that letter because it's not recorded prayer yet. Prayer and platypi. <laughs> Prayer and platypi, but it's it's a free video series that you have access to, and if you go to prayingchristianwomen.com slash gratitude, you'll have access to it, and it was a real huge blessing for me, and so I was excited to share it in video form with you, so. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's just a neat reminder, kind of like what we're talking about, like being a praying Christian woman can involve being grateful for things like pumpkin spice latte. Do you know what I mean? Like That's another P that I missed. Darn it. <laughs> and pizza, pepperoni pizza. And <laughs> I'm just trying to throw out more peas now. You're going to have to make up your own lists though. Like if we can right. add to my list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, sometimes it's, it's great to remember, like, I, I honestly believe there's some spiritual truth to pondering this fact that God did not have to make a platypus. Yeah. There is literally like no biological place for a platypus to fit into. Like An it's not a laying mammal. It's not a utilitarian animal. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. we can see, yes, we need to have, you know, scavengers and we need to have animals that provide meat and, you know, like, but we don't need a platypus. Like there's no purpose to it, in my opinion. Other than just showing that God's fun and creative. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's I what totally I totally agree. I have no shame in admitting, yeah, my husband and I spent 15 minutes watching some silly guy making jokes on YouTube and we loved it. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. No, I totally right. agree. So it is, yeah, it's a fun way to look at at Thanksgiving, a fun twist on on Thanksgiving. Yeah. So prayingchristianwomen.com slash gratitude. And now let's close with our blessing and benediction. May God enlarge your ministry today. May he widen the place of your impact. May the anointing of the Holy Spirit equip you for every good deed that God has prepared in advance for you to do. May he strengthen and encourage you in your calling because you know that the labor in the Lord is not in vain. May the author and perfecter of your faith bless you so that you can be a blessing to others. And our benediction is from Revelation 7, 12. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.